And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Hipsabima, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Hipsabima was a hadrosauroid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now North Carolina and Missouri in the U.S., and it was an herbivore. It was estimated to have around 1,000 small teeth. These teeth were more serrated than other hadrosaurs, so it may have eaten tough vegetation. Hipsabima probably had a beak as well. There's two species, Hipsabima crassicata and Hipsabima missouriensis. I wonder where missouriensis is from. (laughs) It's hard to guess. (laughs) There's a whole thing about that, which I'll get into in a moment, but Hypsobema crassicata is the type species, and that's estimated to be 49 feet or 15 meters long. And then Hypsobema missouriensis is slightly smaller. They're estimated to be about 14 tons, though some estimates had them weighing 17 to 20 tons. So Hypsobema is pretty large, and that may have been a pretty good defense against predators. Yeah, I'd say 50 feet long for a hadrosaur is pretty massive. (laughs) Yeah, well, you got to make it to adulthood, but still. Yeah. So as I mentioned, the type species is Hypsobema crassicata, and that was described in 1869 by Edward Cope, and it was found in Sampson County, North Carolina. The genus name means high step, and that's because Cope thought that this dinosaur walked on its toes. They pretty much all did. No, but this was an early one, so... (laughs) And the species name means with a fat tail. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. So multiple specimens were found, though femur fragments were thought to be part of the syn type, were later found to have come from a tyrannosauroid that was similar to Dryptosaurus. Hypsobema missouriensis fossils were first found in 1942 at the Cronister Dinosaur Site near Glen Allen, Missouri. And these are the first dinosaur fossils found in the state and actually the only ones found so far. The holotype of Hypsobema crassicata was found at the King James Marl Pits in North Carolina, and they found caudal vertebra, humerus, tibia, and metatarsal. Hypsobema probably lived near a large body of water, and the one found in Missouri was discovered by the Cronister family when they were digging a well, which they didn't end up using because there ended up not being enough water. (laughs) I'm glad they dug it, though. (laughs) Yeah, well, I think the whole state of Missouri is glad because... That led to the state dinosaur, but I'll get to that in a minute. So Hypsobema missouriensis was described in 1945 by Charles Whitney Gilmore and Dan R. Stewart. Stewart collected the fossils, and he was nicknamed Dinosaur Dan. And he told the Smithsonian about the find, who paid $50 for the bones. (laughs) That included 13 vertebrae from the tail. And that money apparently was used to buy a cow later. (laughs) And then a little after that, more fossils were found. It's really a win-win. Mm -hmm. So they dug a well, they didn't get any water, but they got a cow out of it. It was unclear when I was reading it who bought the cow. (laughs) (laughs) I'm assuming it's the people that sold the fossils. Right, but Stuart collected the fossils, so... Oh, maybe he got the cow? It was unclear to me. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. $50 is pretty good, too. That's well before the crazy days of big budget dinosaur auctions. Oh, yeah. So Hypsobema was originally thought to be a sauropod because Gilmore thought it was either a hadrosaur or a sauropod and then decided that it couldn't be a hadrosaur because of the chevrons and the, quote, more elongate centra. And then a few decades later, excavation started again at the site. And that happened because geologist Bruce Stinchcomb purchased the property. And then in the late 1980s, there were test excavations. They also found fish, turtles, plants, and teeth from a Tyrannosauroidea dinosaur, as well as parts of the jaw and dental remains of Hypsobema missouriensis. Originally, Hypsobema missouriensis was called Neosaurus missouriensis, and then it was renamed later in 1945 by Gilmore and Stewart to Parasaurus missouriensis because it turns out the name Neosaurus was already the name for a synapsid. In 1979, Donald Baird and Jack Horner found that Parasaurus was actually a species of Hypsobema, so then they renamed it to Hypsobema missouriensis. Some people thought that Hypsobema missouriensis was dubious, and at least one scientist thinks that Parasaurus is still a valid genus and separate from Hypsobema. This is based on newer discoveries at the site where the holotype was found. The old debate of lumping and splitting. Is it different enough to get its own genus name, or should it just be lumped in and get a distinct species? Yes. (laughs) But I think at this point, There'd be a lot of people who want to see it stay as Hypsobema missouriensis because, again, this is the only dinosaur that's been found in Missouri so far because Missouri state soil is not great for preserving fossils. 
And actually, one paleontologist, Guy Darrow, from St. Louis said that it was, quote, pretty much a miracle that dinosaurs have been found there. So because of all this, probably, uh, Hypsobema missouriensis became the official state dinosaur of Missouri in 2004. So if they change the name back to Parasaurus, then they're going to have to change their <laughs> official state dinosaur name, too. I don't know how that works. There might be a petition to the ICZN then to just keep it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know how that would go. <laughs> But Missouri was the sixth state in the U.S. to have an official dinosaur. There was almost unanimous approval to make it the state dinosaur. Not a lot of competition. <laughs> yeah. So some Hypsobema missouriensis fossils are housed at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And if you want to see Hypsobema missouriensis, you can go to the Bollinger County Museum of Natural History in Missouri. They have a full-size model. And the museum has said that since they had the official state dinosaur... That's tripled the number of their visitors. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 